everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Tuesday, and the patch notes for patch 9.3 have been posted, which means it's time for another patch note rundown. As always, I'm looking through the biggest changes in this week's patch and letting you guys know what you can be looking forward to in the coming weeks. This week, I wanted to experiment a little bit more with the patch note rundown uh, format that I've been doing recently and actually have the notes on the screen so you guys have a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about as opposed to completely unrelated gameplay. So, gonna be posting this as sort of an experiment. Let me know which version you guys like best, and I'll go ahead and continue doing whichever version you prefer. Anyways, to move on to 9.3, there are a lot of actually very meaningful changes in this one, first and foremost. A lot of changes directed at nerfing down the best professional picks, and hopefully actually nerfing them in a meaningful way so they won't get played anymore. In addition, there's the whole crit marksman item refactoring. Yet again, for the, for the third time probably in the last couple of years, we are getting another crit marksman itemization update. That should help Crit Marksman feel a little bit better about things, but first and foremost, let's go ahead and jump right into the biggest changes, starting with our champions, our outliers, Aatrox. Obviously, Aatrox has been really, really strong for a long time. These nerfs here are basically intended to actually give him weaknesses in lane and opportunities to exploit. So the health regen and the health regen growth buffs here are basically just compensating for the fact that Umbral Dash no longer heals him for damage he deals to non-champions. The only time he gets any healing from Umbral Dash is when he damages champions. So he has to be trying to fight people if he wants to actually get sustained. So we can't just kind of not for, not take bad trades. There are actually opportunities to really get some damage down on Aatrox if he uses his cooldowns. As part of this, Umbral Dash no longer has a charge system, so he can't store two charges. He It's a cooldown now up to five seconds. It is reduced by cooldown reduction, so Aatrox can get a very low cooldown on Umbral Dash if he maxes out on CDR, but it means early on Aatrox can't land two Qs very effectively unless he gets some other shenanigans going on, and it also means that if he dashes forward, he no longer has a dash backwards, so if he does use the dash early on, you can immediately go for a gank. Knowing that Aatrox is out of mobility, he has nothing else he can really do. These should be a huge boon in actually giving Aatrox windows opportunities to play around him. Unfortunately, Urgot will probably just replace Aatrox in most situations, but it does mean that this champion is no longer obscenely broken. Akali is nerfed on this patch as well. Now, the biggest thing here is that Akali no longer prevents turrets from revealing herself when she uses her W. That's a big deal because it means that she can't really dive with impunity. She actually has to worry about getting underneath towers because she will be revealed and she will be able to be damaged even by targeted effects. Now, this doesn't do anything for her team fighting potential. She still has the obscured effect. She's still completely invisible while she's in her shroud out from underneath turrets, but it does help the sort of solo queue experience a little bit better. She also no longer has the heal on five point strike, as you can see. So that way she should be a little bit easier to actually wear, wear down in lane because she can't just start queuing the wave at full energy and just get a whole bunch of health back for absolutely no reason. Now she really, really needs to be looking for opportunities to trade and a lot of ranged champions will be able to bully her out. Her health regen does have a pretty massive buff here, but that's be to compensate for the fact that she doesn't have the healing on five point strike anymore. This should really tone down Akali and hopefully make her less of a guaranteed must pick champion and more of a do we want to play Akali in this team composition. Camille's nerf here, pretty self-explanatory, doesn't stun minions and monsters on hookshot anymore, which actually really reduces her potential for level 2 ganks because she can't get scuttle crab quite as quickly or quite as effectively. She also doesn't have a lot of sort of free damage in the jungle because she can't jump in on a camp, stun it, get a bunch of damage off before they start attacking her. Now the second she jumps in, they will be hitting her back. So this is actually pretty big nerf to Camille jungle. I do expect her to still potentially see play in the top lane, but I would really be surprised to continue to, continue to see her in the jungle after this nerf. Cassiopeia, same deal as the last few patches, trying to reduce her ability to just deal damage from a long range. She, These nerfs are really, really targeted at getting her to have to use Twin Fang to do damage. And this isn't because Riot like Twin Fang, it's because Twin Fang is her shortest range ability and it makes it so that Cassiopeia has to expose herself to some degree of harm, as opposed to just popping poison on you and then running away with you being able to do nothing about it at this point. So the 40 base damage off of Noxious Blast at max rank is a huge deal. It did have a buff to its AP ratio, to sort of help offset that, but it does mean that Cassiopeia won't be just able to land a Q on you at level 9 and run away and you just take 215 free damage on top of whatever the poison does. The Miasma nerf, same kind of thing, less damage per second, so less max damage. In fact, that's actually 100 damage off at maximum rank. And then the mana cost now scales with rank as well, so if you are trying to max it for more damage, you're also going to be spending a lot more mana to do so. 
Aurelia's nerfs here are really interesting. They're trying to convert her more towards a damage over time champion as opposed to super bursty. So she now gets up to five stacks of the passive, but she gains attack speed per stack as opposed to on hit damage. And now she only gets an on hit damage at maximum stacks. There's also significantly less on hit damage, I believe, because it no longer is per stack. So it's definitely going to be a lot easier to deal with Aurelia. Even if she stacks all the way up to full, she doesn't have the same level of bursting potential that she did previously she will have to start auto attacking the bonus damage buff to minions is just to compensate for the fact that they're trying not to reduce her wave clear even further than it was in a previous patch and the defiant dance change is actually the biggest one because it no longer has any reduced magic damage or da magic damage reduction she takes full magic damage while channeling w which means that it basically nullifies Aurelia in the mid lane. All you have to do is pick someone like Lissandra, pick another mage, and W does nothing for her to protect her during trades. So she is definitely only going to be seeing play in the top lane. I honestly think this is a big enough nerf because she wasn't really finding success in the top lane. So I think this will be a big enough nerf that Aurelia is just going to completely fall off the face of the map. I don't know that this that it's really going to be a lot going for her after this patch. Now, going into crit marksman itemization. Now, Riot are trying to basically get crit marksmen to feel better about their build paths in a couple different ways. First and foremost, crit marksmen are going to spike after two items once again. Now, Riot aren't trying to make them so that they're the most important character on your team, again, once they hit the two items spike, but trying to make them feel at least a little bit better when they do hit two items and can say, all right, I can actually do meaningful damage now, as opposed to saying, well, I still have another full item to go. I'm still completely worthless. So we'll have to see where things actually end up. The other thing is Riot are trying to give them a defensive option that they can sort of build into their build without having to sacrifice going for crit. One of the biggest complaints about the current system is you have to get Storm Razor, you have to get a Zeal item, and you have to get Infinity Edge. Well, if I need a defensive item, where do I actually insert that into the build? So Riot have given Marksmen better options for fitting defensive items into the build. First and foremost, Infinity Edge has been partially reverted back to what it was before. Uh, Cloak of Agility is back in the game if you didn't see it up above there so it now grants critical strike again and it increases your critical strike damage by 25 percent as opposed to the 50 percent it did before so hopefully it's not back to the i crit you once with an infinity edge and you just kind of died build so we'll have to see how that plays out but it definitely should be feeling a little bit better than it was before when you get your zeal item essence reaver also got reverted to the um the refund uh, the basic attacks refund mana um iteration so this will again probably be a really good item for ash and zaya to pick up first and doesn't really work on renekton and ribbon but we will get to that here in just a second because Spear of Shojin is going to be added to the game. But instead of the sort of shield-based iteration that Riot were testing alongside the, um, in especially in the uh, the Nexus Blitz game mode, it now is essentially Old Essence Reaver, but weighted towards fighters because now it builds out of a BF Sword, a Kindle Gem, and a Long Sword. This is going to be really, really ridiculous on fighters because it no longer forces them to build mana, which is a stat they don't care about. They just get health and AD. So Riven and Renekton and Master Yi are going to absolutely love this item. In all honesty, I think it's going to completely break them because they no longer are wasting gold on stats they can't use. Um, but I do expect it to be nerfed or adjusted because now that it exists in a form that they actually want to use, Riot can balance it around its actual usage as opposed to beforehand where it's sort of like, well, we can't really nerf it because the fighters are building mana. And they don't need that. So we'll have to see how this goes. But I do expect Riven and Renekton and a couple other fighters who could who could abuse the old Essence Reaver to abuse this just as much. Uh, Storm Razor is now converted to an energized build, so it doesn't just give you the sort of free damage out of nowhere. It still gives you the um it gives you a slow on enemies when you proc an energized effect. So that's actually gonna be pretty good for a couple of for a couple of different characters. Um it's definitely not a first build anymore, but I could see it as an option for uh characters who are already building um energized items so if you're already getting a fire cannon already getting a static shiv storm razor is potentially a good option for you could definitely see someone like tristana maybe getting some use out of this we'll have to see speaking of the defensive option phantom dancer is now basically a defensive option now it builds out of the um the zeal and dagger and brawler's glove like before but also has the lifeline passive. So it gives so it gives a whole bunch of shielding when you hit low HP. So this is the crit item you pick up when you want to get something defensively. When you realize, wow, there are a bunch of assassins that are killing me, or I'm just behind, I just need to live team fights. You can pick up a Phantom Dancer and get that lifeline shield to hopefully keep you alive at low HP, while not sacrificing your ability to actually hit that sort of two item crit power spike. So hopefully this is a good option for champions to go. And then we also have the nerfs, or the buffs, sorry, to all the zeal 
items. They're down to 2,600 gold once more, so we can all celebrate there. A little bit less critical strike chance, but you will be able to pick them up faster, so crit marksmen should feel a lot better about their build. They should be able to hit their two item spark more early on, and they should feel better about it. They will be able to start dealing damage at that uh, spike. A couple of changes to armor penetration, but essentially all they're really trying to do is make Last Whisper a component item. So Last Whisper doesn't feel like such a troll choice that you just kind of sit on and it does nothing for you. This should be a reasonable item to get if you need armor penetration and you don't feel bad about it while you're still waiting for the Mortal Reminder or the Lord Dominic's regards. Um, we have a couple other buffs to a couple top tier champions here. Lissandra is actually losing a lot of her wave clear changes. The higher mana cost on Ice Shard, sure. She still has her ridiculous durability from Aftershock. That didn't go away, and Aftershock didn't receive any changes on this patch. But if we actually look at the changes here, the increased mana cost on Ice Shard means Lissandra can't wave clear as easily. She's going to be using a lot more mana to try and shove waves out, which is really going to hurt her. The damage reduction on Glacial Path doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it does mean, again, her wave clears reduce, and it also does mean that she has to be investing more in magic damage in order to offset the nerfs that the Glacial Path's damage is. So, if she does choose to go for Aftershock or a more defensive build, she is sacrificing a lot more ability to shove waves out. So, I think this is a meaningful nerf, and I think I don't think this will be enough to completely remove Lissandra as sort of a niche pick into things like Akali or Aatrox mid. But it does mean that she's not just a guaranteed, blind, safe pick that we can just pick up. So, we'll have to see how these play out. But I do think Lissandra will be going down in priority as a result of these. Uh, Scion's nerfs here. Definitely trying to make it so that in bad matchups, he can be hurt a lot more. The increased cooldown on Soul Furnace means that he doesn't always have this shield available to just kind of sponge off some damage. And then the Decimating Smash reduction means he can't wave clear quite as easily. Now, it's not a huge reduction in damage. Um, but it, the biggest thing is on the full charge damage is down by 30 at rank 1. So Scion shouldn't just be able to shove out as easily. He will actually have bad matchups now. As opposed to, again, being a super safe pick that you just kind of choose. Because what are you going to do to him? He's Scion. Finally, wanted to talk a little bit about the gold bounties. Right, did fix it. So now if you fall behind and then farm up a bunch to try and catch up, you don't get a bounty just for catching back up. Now it actually takes a look at your enemy's gold totals and then at your gold totals and say, okay, how much have you? How much are you ahead relative to everybody else versus how much have you farmed up over the last five minutes? So this shouldn't mean that you don't get bounties even when you're sitting on like one in three or something ridiculous. So that's this is a good change and it should mean that bounties are a little bit uh, less punishing when you are behind anyways that's it for the highlights today guys go ahead and let me know what you guys think of this new format down in the comment section below would love to hear your thoughts especially if you enjoyed seeing the changes on the screen let me know if you like the old version better though again let me know that in the comment section below we'll see how where kind of people are feeling so we can start doing one or the other based on your feedback if you enjoyed today's video go ahead and leave a like and if you really enjoyed today's video consider subscribing i upload a video every monday friday and on patch days as well and if you're looking for grab the lantern content you can check out my blog link down in the description i upload an article just about each and every single day for your enjoyment once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.